Reap. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. The whale, like, loses shit yesterday. Okay, we are live. Hello, people. Hello. Oh, I'm hey. just gonna <laughs> just gonna pour me a beer while we uh, while we let these uh, pod bay doors open. Uh, oh, got it. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you, thank you, Haramis, because it's cool as hell. Uh, Haramis is a god, and it lets me uh, pour my beer before the show. So uh, I now have one beer. We have some opened pod bay doors. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Um, hello, everyone. We are coming just one second to do this. Extend that. Okay. Uh, let's get started with the the intro. Um, so I was uh, I was sitting here getting everything I ready. Just see, uh, I just see Astro Pub on Twitch. Really? Yeah. I see me. I think you might need to refresh there. Refresh. Matt. We were we were hosting Astro Pub before because we always host Astro Pub, but because uh, we like uh, there the, we the space pub at the end of the universe. Uh, so uh, I was uh, I was thinking a bit about about what to write for this intro, trying to you know get stuff set up for it. All this new spiffy door hanger was opening and stuff. Um, I was trying to think of something funny to to say, like uh, saying, "Hey, Shiver is marmalade," or Admiral Alpaca arguably adds averagely addictive ad additives all afternoon, or that Nakara smells like nutmeg, or something. Um, but then I uh, I kind of wanted to be slightly serious because, and I know this uh, podcast has nothing at all to do with politics. I don't really give a fuck anymore, because um, yet again, a bunch of school kids in the United States have been shot and killed. Um, I asked Nakara what I should do, and he said I should go with what I feel. And uh, what I feel is that the death of children is not politics. It's not political. It never has been, never will be, never should be. Um, what it is is sad, and what I feel is sorry. I'm really sorry that as a country, there seems to be not much that the U.S. can or will uh, do to stop it. I'm I'm really sorry that that parents throughout the states have to keep having this happen to them and to their children and and i'm sorry that you know students have to have this happen to their classmates i'm i'm really sorry that so many kids that that could have grown up to be anything uh can't um and and what i feel is honestly goddamn grateful that i don't live in the united states because uh the thought of something like that happening to my daughter being as likely as it is um yeah so I'm sorry. I'm sorry to keep bringing it up, but I think I'm. I want to bring this up anytime it happens because uh, it just keeps happening, and I'm just sorry. So, Star Citizen found a yeah. way to apologize again. I will always apologize. Like twenty. Hey, times. that was the most Canadian intro we've ever had. Didn't we have one about moose and poutine? Okay, your points. Yeah, you, you have a valid point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that said, why? Hang on. Why is that not showing up? Oh, why is that? So oh, sorry. Uh, the the chat box appears to be over Nakara. Uh, let's just move this over a little bit. Oh, I am a chatty boy. Okay. Uh, hey everyone. Uh, let's uh, let's get into talking about some Star Citizen. We're going to move right... Well, actually, no. Before we move anywhere... Uh, hey, Admiral Alpaca. Uh, what happened to your brother, Commander hey Lama? Oh, my brother. Oh. Eh, his lack of hygiene got the best of him. Did we have the Mary yeah. Universe uh, the pollen uh, Commander Lama on happened. before? Oh, yeah. pollen count. Yeah. I guess yeah. in the... It, there was just so much that... Yes. Yeah. Passed in his sleep. It's too bad. Yeah, you lost like an entire like mini bear off of your face. <laughs> mm, <yeah>. uh, well, <laughs> it was welcome. The largest beard I ever grew. Welcome to the show again. <laughs> it was glorious. <laughs> it's good to have you on. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. Of course, it's good I'm of all of you. Sorry. <laughs> Don't apologize. 
I mean, look at the rest of us. You're the most sane, probably. Um, I mean, we've got Shiver on the show basically every week. You're right. And... <laughs> uh, Shiver, welcome again. All right. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, Eric? Hi. How's it going? Yeah, it's all right. Good. Let's move on to show and tell. Okay. Okay. I love, no videos. one yet has reacted to my link in the freaking... Te like, come on. That's oh, why, perfect. Why does it do this? Sorry, everyone. <gasps> oh, good. We're, uh, hey, we, we all have entered darkness. Yeah, I don't like know why it, it keeps doing this. It's resized everything on me, even though I did fix everything beforehand. Uh, wow. Oh, oh, there's an eye. Oh. There's a nose difficulties. and a mouth, and there's yeah. another eye. Oh, hey, oh Shiver. that's that. Jeez. <laughs> ah! uh, so let's, I mean, you can see the stuff that's happening down there at least. So uh, talk about that for a moment while I try and oh, okay. uh, um, fix this. I apologize, they're, everyone. They're making a lot of really cool progress with biomes. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Like really, really fast. It's uh, looking good. Yeah. I mean, I... As we all know, um, with Star Citizen, it's always going to be moving towards Im improving quality, um, especially because, you know, we know what the end goal is. Chris has said it a million times. They want to have planets look like crisis levels. Um, but uh, it's definitely coming along um, very nicely. I think the, fo the foliage is looking really good for the m most part. Um at the moment, I'm not happy with the leaves on the trees, especially, but I I, th I think we're all in agreement. That's most definitely work in progress. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Le um, leaf 2.0 is really going to... The grass is starting to look pretty good, though. <laughs> yeah, le leaf 2.0 is coming up. I, I like the trash biome, too, um, for Hurston. There's just, like, shit everywhere. It's great. It's just nice to see biomes at all. Mm-hmm. The lifeless moons they get old they get old after a little while well yes absolutely um you gotta start somewhere but um, yeah, yeah glad, I mean, glad like we're the, moving on to this <laughs> like tools can create a lot of diversity which is is mm -hmm. nice whoa sorry <laughs> working on it <laughs> working on it <laughs> okay Okay. Oh boy. Uh, all right. Um, there we but go. Yeah, I I love a lot of uh, a lot of their work on the planets. They're um, make, it makes you think that you know by the time we actually get to the final product, these worlds are going to look just amazing. I I agree. I really like how they're looking. I. I mean, when they started saying that they were going to be doing procedural planets, to be honest, I didn't think that they'd look this good, uh, much less as good as they will end up looking when they're done. Um, I mean, even the trees, I mean, Shiver, I know you think that the leaves on the trees are pretty flat, but like... They're not terrible, game trees. I'd already play this. I don't know. It, like, they can always... It right on it. Yeah, it's um, playable, but then you you look at those leaves, you look at the detail work in the ships, and <laughs> yeah, I that's think it's all about. You know, that's like um, uh, it's like Forza, right? You know, the cars are like mm. under <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then <laughs> the cars are great, like the, the audience like members are like, left, <laughs> and it's like polygonal people, like. <laughs> yeah. I love like the there was this really awkward phase in like the early two thousands where they started to get better graphics tech in racing games, but they put it all into the cars. Yeah, and, and then so you, you have still, like two cardboard people yeah. standing along the side. I mean, you do just stare at the car or just a little bit ahead of the car the whole time, so it makes sense. It, it makes sense. It's just funny. <laughs> um. In terms of this, though, I think I, I think that that's the you're hitting on the right thing, though. I think that they'll iterate on the foliage as things go along. Like a good example was the uh, boreal one from a week or two ago, and the trees were very obviously placeholders. They had like no textures on them, and the, you know, <laughs> it's like everyone was like, "That that looks terrible," and I'm like, "They're testing it." 
<laughs> they're just testing the density of trees. It, um, oh, I hope they are, because you know so. what that means? There's what? a build out there that they refer to as the tree branch. <laughs> you can almost feel that one coming. Wow. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's move along to our next set of gifts. I've seen this one about yeah. 12 yeah. Times. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> How about that running animation? I really like that animation. Well, there it's coming along. It used to be really, really bad. <laughs> uh, they've been doing some work on mining. Um, they have. Yeah. I like the work that they're doing on mining. I oh, that looks so good. I'm excited to see it in game. This looks really cool. I, like the rock heating up. And they were saying in the episode that this is still placeholder. Like, none of this is done. This clearly isn't done, but... Man, that looks cool. It's, uh... My, my one complaint, and I, I don't know if they're even going to be able to do this, but my one complaint is when I'm mining on a planet, I want to be drilling down into the planet. I don't want to be, like, drilling into a rock on the surface. Well, That's if we if when we get thought. to the beginning of this gif again, it does look like the prospector is shooting you can shoot down, down can right? It? Uh, yeah. In one well, it is shooting down, but I think it's shooting down into a rock that's placed on the surface of the planet. That's fine. Oh, okay. That's all. What if the <clears throat> prospect is not even on a planet? What if that's it on an asteroid and we're not going to be able to dig down at all on a planet? I could see that happening, to be honest, because that 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 digging down into the planet is some whole new level of tech that they, they, they've they already said that they can't physically generate that on the fly anyway. Are you know, sure they can't I, what anymore? I'm, what I'm thinking is that they would create a, create like, uh, spaces in the geometry where they put veins. Um, mm -hmm. so they, like, it can be an item placed on the planet, but it's actually placed like under the surface, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And they ha they yeah. actually have like a, a cutout of the geometry for that spot. That's what I was thinking. But um, yeah, they're also doing some work on AI because uh, seems like the AI has some issues in the PA yeah. PU right now. Oh, why why would you say that? Seems fine to me. It's... I mean, when I got shot in the back, that's how I react. <laughs> I hate to say it, but that to me is actually more realistic. If I got shot in the back and wasn't dead, my first instinct would be click, like like pull trigger. Full and auto. Then, like, yep. I like it. That that to me is like start shooting and then figure out. Actually, I thought okay. they were just reenacting so, a scene from Predator. I, I, I'm gonna like flip this around to slightly real world stuff, but. Many years ago, my brother almost got attacked by a cougar um, when we were out hunting. And, oh, hunting! Uh, so, Sorry, I thought he was yeah. at a bar. No, 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 no! Not, not like a, <laughs> not like a, cat, not cat. like a forty-three-year-old woman <laughs> in a bar. Um, <laughs> no, like an actual like mountain lion cougar. Right. Um, and uh, so he was walking along this trail, and he heard something behind him, and he turned around, and this cougar like ran across the trail. And he just started firing. He fired six shots, and it was just like bang, 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 just exactly like that. Like, just uh, I'm gonna spray bullets and hope it runs away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spray and pray. It's an important part of first-person shooters. It is. Yes. It's uh, critical. You know, you, which is what that machine what... gun looks like. It's for. Oh yeah. You, I just saw it. You I also. You, you think about it, the AI haven't been taught what to do when they've been shot in the back. So that means that the testers have been sneaking up to the AI and going, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to stab him every single time. That's more fun. Right? Right? Uh, we don't have the sound for it, because I don't care about the sound for 90% of it, but the sound of that sniper rifle? Oh, yes. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it's good that they're working on the AI. I'm really excited to see the AI actually hit the PU. That's like supremely important. Uh, they've done more work on ship explosions. I mean, can we, can we just agree that the ships exploding looks fantastic period? Like, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And shave, shaving the wing off. Yeah. It looks so good. Oh. It's that's awesome. Uh, Hurston looks good. Management. You just so, took those. Uh, they, they talked a little bit about the shopping this week in ATV. Um, it's good. More more usability on shopping is always important. Uh, more stuff. They'll be they'll be iterating on this right up until the release of the game because it's so important to like the core mechanics of the game um, well, for trading and stuff. And for this, they're probably going to be reiterating on this basically forever, right? Cause... Actually, I should say, yeah, not even just right up to the release, but even forever. They'll continue making it better. Yeah, so it looks good now. It's going to keep getting better. Uh, no issues with that. I, I actually think that's something that CIG kind of gets a kind of a, a help with is that they can just say that, you know, when when they launch into beta, it's this, and then when they make better ships and better this and this, it's just the new years of ships and it's the new year of, mm -hmm. like, everything's updated year to year because that's already kind of in lore. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, except for except for like um, transaction machines, because in real life they get updated like once every decade. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, we you did like also... go to the store and the pin pad will be just like <laughs> unreadable, and the screen is so scratched you can't. Re yeah, I wanted to see that in like Grim Hex or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've already seen some of that actually. There have been some really <laughs> battered and destroyed screens in in Grim mm -hmm. Hex, right? So that's true. So we, we saw some related actually to a, a, a chat comment I just saw. Will we eventually be able to order a pizza or perhaps Uber Eats through the kiosks? I really hope so. Um, that would be a great thing, like a great inverse sponsorship for no no, hang on though. Hang on. CIG needs real life advertising in game, right? Now if someone like Domino's were to add at, hold up add ads inverse ads on the sides of like hull ease yeah as like domino's pizza 2942 but you could also order in like I domino's kill that ship order it to that. your house f from in game as kind of <laughs> the hilarious that would work <laughs> also uh, awesome. stevie madman <laughs> thanks for the subscription I'm not to contract. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um I sorry, I went a different direction to this. The reason I was laughing before was I was imagining being like in like the null system buried in an asteroid belt and you're like shit, I don't have any food left. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. someone bring me a pizza. <laughs> Shad <laughs> Turk, thank you. Oh, Oh my god, if you guys could hear the grinding in my shoulder. Oh. Feel those bones scraping together. Oh yeah. Hey, Shannon, Shannon Turks has subscribed 11 months in a row. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're crazy. I don't know why, but thank you. <laughs> it's it's to see me in pain, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so we saw a lot of Vanduul stuff this week. Yep. Weapons, some images of the Vanduul. It's all looking uh, very... Okay, I'm going to repeat organic. what I said pre... Pre-show because I, I love this moment in the uh, in the uh, ATV right where one of the guy one of the guys who's talking about the blade is like it's this evil it's this evil ship it's all spiky and shit and it, it's just a bad guy's ship and it's designed to blow up and then um, right afterwards one of the other guys who's talking about the ship is like we were trying to do, <laughs> trying to not make the Vanduul seem like mindless evil um, uh, like bloodthirsty enemies. We're trying to introduce like some uh, intellectual parts for for them and like make it make it more understandable where they come from and it's like just like polar opposite perspectives. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, Shiver, <clears throat> you've been rather quiet. What are your thoughts on uh, some of the Vandal stuff being shown off? I wish Geiger was alive. Yeah. Basically, just bring in Geiger if they could and have him design it, and that'd be it. You'd have the best game ever made. Agreed. 
uh, Admiral Paca, you uh, you did that whole take a decent break off of Star Citizen, like you were interested at the beginning. Then you took a, took a break for a while, came back, take a break, come back, which is, in all honesty, that's the healthy thing to do. I hop. Yeah, I hop. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of how the Vandal, like they've changed a fair bit from from the first concept stuff that we, we started to see of them. What do you think of them? Um, so my earliest memory of the Vandal was a... Uh... Some kind of ship trailer about them. I, I want to say it's about two years ago. Um, probably, maybe it's less than that. I'm not sure. Uh, it was a big ship flying. I don't know. It was probably like it, it's in my like top three like ship porn videos in my head. Uh, but I don't remember the details enough. I don't know. The van, the, the blade looked cool to me. I, I dig it. It looks. Yeah, I like it. It looks yeah. angry. I think my favorite part about the ship it's is the, the ribs yeah. that open up on the bottom to reveal the the uh, landing gear. That's yeah. so cool. I love the red. I love that red pulsing. Yeah, they're so we're all agree. Actually, they change it's... it more to a pulse than a like straight up flash. I would even like it a little more. Mm -hmm. But it's very like aggressive. I like it. So do we all agree it's a pretty sharp design? I hate you. No. Uh, and last thing, um, last little clip we're gonna look at before we move on a bit. Uh, is the Avenger rework looks good. 600i is coming oh, along. Yeah. I'm, I'm 600i looks Avenger. like something out of Star Trek TNG. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm also really 100%. excited for that Avenger rework. It looks bigger and more like a whale, uh, which yep. is great. Yeah, they did it. One of the things I also love they did with that is that um, you can't tell so much with the blue and yellow variant, but. Uh, they actually made, especially the underside, um, okay, the whole thing was supposed to be inspired by the space shuttle. The underside now has, like, tiles that actually look like the, uh, the, the, um, heat shield tiles from the space shuttle. Yeah. It's really cool. They were yeah. showing that off in a previous episode. Yeah. It's all looking pretty darn good. Uh, I think that's, there were also some screenshots this week. Uh, from the contest that they were running, uh, the screenshots are all outstanding. Um, mm -hmm. I believe. This oh, is, I love that one. Yeah, and this is one of those ones that I believe Mister Hasgaha was not allowed to enter into because he wins everything. Wins previously. everything. But, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, the the all like straight up huge props to everyone doing the screenshot stuff in Star Citizen. It's it is really one of the best looking games out there and it's not even out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, we're going to go back to this. Oh, I forgot that that will replay when I do that. Sorry. I'm still learning how this works. Can I can I turn just that off. Is, is the screenshot competition. Now I might've got the news mixed up here, but is that the one where they said the anteater might've been placed? Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Someone placed the anteater in the Star Citizen shots. All right. Yeah. Um, before we move on to the article, there was some stuff in Calling All Devs. Uh, ship radars are going to be fixed a little bit. Um, larger ships will have better radars and be... Ba basically, be we... 3.0 broke... They didn't even realize at first. No, it was 3.1, sorry. Broke the ship radars. Um, so they were all the same. Um, and they're fixing it with 3.2. Yeah. They wanted to fix it with, like, an incremental patch, but the, the team that was working on stabilizing the game's performance were like, no. You're not touching the build. Yeah. <laughs> Stay away. And also, <laughs> they're doing a fair bit of work on team mechanics. So communications between team members, quantum linking... And uh, being able to share rewards between team members, which, again, is pretty huge. Being able to Idle. actually play with other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're not going there quite yet. But I am going to uh, take a second to say, if you guys do have any questions, throw them in that uh, handy link that's just been posted in chat. 
Uh, and if you are by any chance watching this, you know, on YouTube after the fact, uh, it sucks, but you can see that link. Type it in. You can ask us uh, questions for next week. We'll, we'll still answer them. Uh, at the same time, we uh, there was a bit of an article uh, that went up this week. I'm posting it in chat as well, again, for anyone that didn't read it. Uh, it asks the ever question, um, the question that has been asked numerous times, uh, but it's also always really nice to uh, get, one, a new viewpoint, and two, such an in-depth viewpoint. So, uh, Commander Llama, uh, what made you write it? Um, I think it was another personal quest, just like my first article about multi-crew. Um, I was never involved in the other, like, 1,000 pages of discussion that have already happened <laughs> um, about uh, the status of pay-to-win and Star Citizen. So I missed basically all of that. Um, but I think I've just occasionally brought it up as a talking point um with you Eris over the years uh sometimes indirectly or directly I just went you know I used to just talk about it a lot so um what really was the genesis actually was uh I think it was a board board gamer YouTube video uh early this year where he talked about it um and it that just got me thinking about it and I was I, I was also just talking with you um, I was like, "Has it? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a stab at this." From us, I mean, I, I follow the project now more than someone external to the project, but like, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try a neutralish stab at this. See where I end up. So, it was a good neutralish stab. Can you, can you TLDR the article? Yeah, so that was a that was a funny realization on Friday. <laughs> I was like, you know, relay like at least one of the relay pillars is doing TLDRs. Uh, we really should have probably done a TLDR for like that fifteen page article. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't do one for the multi crew article. I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know. So, I I actually found both of the articles pretty spellbinding, so I read the whole thing for both of them multiple times. Uh, I didn't read them, so I don't know. Well, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <You> wrote them. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't think it's watch. required that you read them. Um, yeah. What was the question? Um, what's remember. the TLDR? Yeah. What's the TLDR, TLDR for the article? Actually, hang on, hang on. Before we get to that, uh, Stuart GT asks, "Was it posted to Spectrum?" Uh, yes. Funny story. So on Reddit, it was 85% upvoted, uh, around 800 upvotes, or around 750 upvotes, around 850. 800, 800, I think. Yeah. 800 upvotes, 800, 850 comments, like, top of the sub for a day or two, like, supreme amount of, of interaction and, like, like, people going at it and, and discussion and amazing discussion, like, like, and... and We'll get into that in a bit, but uh, yeah, it was posted on Spectrum. It got uh, nine uh, comments and three uh, upvotes. You mean all the people using Spectrum upvoted it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was great. Yeah, uh, so... Oh. Yeah. There you go. There, There's... So I kicked like we managed to kick the hornet's nest on reddit but we like were off the mark a little on spectrum yeah well everyone's always off the mark on spectrum <laughs> I, yeah. I honestly i didn't check the spectrum one i, just, <clears throat> I woke up um uh, and the reddit thread was already blowing up and i was like it got posted <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> got, it got posted um, late in the evening and i was like so I woke up this morning it's at like Plus four hundred, lol. Yeah. Which I which I was I was laughing at really hard because uh, at like nine p.m. my time, 
I, it was posted and the initial response was pretty mediocre and David was really angry that it wasn't getting more tra- <laughs> more attention. And about by midnight when I was starting to head to bed, it was like plus 200 and I was like, whoa, am I going to bother him about this in the morning? I'll just let him see it himself. <laughs> okay, so um, back to back to so, that original question though. So I think... I uh, just wanted to... Before just, the TL- yeah. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go, 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 go. Okay. Go. I'll, 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 what I, from what I understand of Reddit, 800, 800, like upvotes, comments, means it generated a lot of discussion but didn't actually get really explosive. Because mm-hmm. uh, normally you have a ton of upvotes and like you know, a little bit comments type thing. Uh, so hopefully some good discussion came out of it. I know there was some screaming in the thread. Uh, and there were, there was the typical Reddit response of no, uh, they, they, they read the headline, but they didn't, they definitely didn't read the article. Uh, that was present. So can um, you give us a quick TLDR? Is TLDR. Star Citizen pay to win? Uh, I attempted to approach the definition of pay to win, uh, semantically first. That's very important, uh, both to me and just to a good argument. Um, once that was established, and I think I established it as kind of a, in a multiplayer setting, can you, can you use real money to get an advantage over others? Uh, something roughly like that. You can read the article for the exact definition. Uh, and the answer is, yeah, Star Citizen is, I, I define kind of a pay-to-win spectrum uh, where you're either not on the spectrum at all, you're not pay-to-win at all, or you're on it somewhere, and you could be a little bit if the game was tuned properly, or... You could be the nightmare fuel, uh, Asian MMOs, worst <laughs> examples uh, of pay to win at the other end of the spectrum. And I hopefully argued that it's some, it's going to end up somewhere on that spectrum. And it's worth keeping an eye on and constantly talking about, let's not let it slide too far. Uh, Shiver? Uh, so before the article went live, one of the things was that, you know, a bunch of us read it through for editing and, and crap like that. Cause that's what we always do. Um, Shiver, what was your thought originally? And what did you think after the, uh, after you read it? Uh, my original thoughts was, uh, no, it is not pay to win. It's not going to be pay to win. You're mad. You're stirring up controversy. Ah! Also, oh god, not this again. Then I read it, and I was like, fuck, he's made some really good fucking points, and he's right, it kind of is, it's it's kind of, but you could TLDR it as, no, but yar, but no, but kinder. (laughs) I like that Shiver froze right at the end of that TL. But yeah, uh, that's just me having a stroke, don't worry. I have to click that. Yeah, that's the aneurysm you get when you get to the line of the <laughs> so i i but actually I barely got in there oh just <laughs> yeah which I, okay uh so i was one of the people who like read and edited the article first <clears throat> and i've argued against this point for like the last five years and my response was yeah <laughs> that was about right i i the problem is that the, we needed actually. I, I really liked the article because we needed a long form discussion of what we actually mean in this sense. Because I mean, yeah. people use pay to win as like a as like, and a lot of people go, "Oh, well, it's like Battlefront Two, or Star Wars Battlefront Two, which was just like horrendous." Um, so that's the important. It was important to establish that there is a spectrum, and that Star Citizen does fall on that spectrum because there is a way to get some kind of material advantage in the game with real money. Uh, so we don't know the magnitude. There's so many hypothetical. Uh, there's basically CIG has a lot of numbers that they can turn tune in the gameplay in the design. Yeah. Uh, so we really like 
it's a complete dartboard in terms of where we're going to land. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's honestly, it. it's up to CIG, really. To, um, to me, there were two, the, I, to me, there were two most important things of that article. Uh, one was simply the, the discussion that really <laughs> should happen is that there are actually very, very few games that are a literal interpretation of pay to win. You pay money, you win. Um, yeah, mostly, most of them are mobile games. Like, probably the mobile games. But, but even the mobile games, like, like most games have throttled that back to a, it's pay for advantage, right? Or uh, advantage or uh, time savings, usually. Yeah. It's but it's like, yeah. and, and you Star could spend, Citizen, you could spend thirty six hours building this building or get it built instantly by clicking this button. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and one of the problems is that pay to win is quite frankly a misnomer. It is not an accurate term for what it represents because and, and it, Star Citizen does have some aspects of it because you are paying to reduce the amount of time you have to put into the game. You are paying for a ship that would take you 100 hours to get yep. you there is no question there <clears throat> there are mitigating factors and honestly read the article because it goes through all the mitigating uh, factors but there is nothing that is pay to win i pay it, it's nakara and i sitting in a in a so like versus match and i put in five dollars and he puts in ten dollars and he wins that's pay to win. That doesn't really happen there. But the other the, the other thing that you said that I really thought was was interesting, not just in this article, but just in a you know different way of looking at Star Citizen, it really made me think, quite frankly, was the idea that ships are content in Star Citizen. Yeah. Like they are. I mean they're not just content, but um they They're, are they are partly content yeah, i think some of the sure. ships are actually bigger than some games <laughs> yeah but but i i it's just that that like okay ships are content that i just i'm still trying to mull it over if i'm honest like it's the, 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 the ships are the, in battlefield content then no because there's no difference between them and you can't walk around on the inside of them. Yeah. Whereas, whereas there is like ships are almost kind of like mini DLCs in a way of like a Hornet versus a Reclaimer are two entirely different experiences, two entirely different ways of playing the game, two entirely different things. And the Reclaimer is, the Reclaimer is big enough to be like an FPS level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you, they offer you... different gameplay. Yes, uh, they do. There's going to be some commonality. You're always going to have a so, pilot. But one of the things that always muddied the waters for me, and I still think it muddy, muddies the waters, is that whether or not the advantage that you are paying for is actually something people want, because it's not very cut and dry in Star Citizen. If your goal as a player of Star Citizen is to be this guy who runs cargo with his Aurora, then Reclaimer doesn't dick all for you. <laughs> yeah. Whereas if it's a linear game where you know, in order to get better at the game, because the game has one purpose, and you know, one purpose only, you have to go through these steps, and, um, then that's a lot more literal. Um, or as this, it's like, well, it's really nebulous because, um, because what your personal goals are in the game can set that. And also, you know, they've already talked about this. They're like early game, a hull E might be almost useless because it, it costs so much money to even put enough cargo on it to afford the trip. You know what I mean? Because it costs so much money to operate it and it's so huge that you need to have a lot of capital to begin with in the game to even buy enough cargo to put on it. So it's... Um, it, it's There are a lot of factors, but I think that 
the article summed up base the basics very well of the heart of the the heart of the conversation. I think your point is probably one of my like favorite, uh, maybe not direct rebuttals, but additions to what I wrote. Um, and we we just don't. I guess we don't really know at this point what the overheads are going to be. I totally agree. Like in the Holly case, it can carry so much cargo that just the cost of filling it up completely and the fuel. Uh, no one's going to have that much money probably on day one. Yeah. But even there, if there's a way for people who own Hollies to buy money every day, for example, um. Some people are gonna. Some people might be able to overcome ship overheads, and they'd be able to do it faster than others if they pay money. But it's I don't have time uh, to play the game every day. But someone does. There are some retired people that are going to be able to play Star Citizen for like twelve hours a day, every day, period. But what if the reputation system also matters? You're not gonna. You're not going to be able to fill your hull E up with a guy who doesn't trust you. You're going to end up getting this hull E and transporting a bottle of milk halfway across the galaxy for a couple of cents and be like, well, got to keep doing that in this hull E. Yep. Mm -hmm. no, that's the thing is like, it, it's that's why it's so nebulous is because they've already talked about all the overhead costs like NPC AI if you want, if you don't have human crew. Um, <laughs> You have fuel, you have uh, docking fees, you have um, transaction fees. Um, and then if you're in a Hall E and you're actually trying to trade with a planet, you need to hire somebody to take your, your cargo from orbit down to the planet if you don't have a small ship with you. Um, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of things that go into this. But, but, the, but the straight up fact is... Is it easier to get the Hull E if you just use money right now? Yes, it is. So there's definitely the, that aspect to it. I think also, uh, and maybe there's numbers already out that I don't know about. I, as far as I know, the economy is not functioning yet, so no one really no. knows. But um, I, I hope, other than the most gigantic ships that are really just for org orgs, uh, I, my hope anyway is that... Um, it's not incredibly difficult to turn a profit in a medium-sized ship because mm -hmm. that doesn't even sound that fun. I don't think it will be. Um, so the like super, it's, this, of, yeah. it's the super large ships that, like, they were talking about the Holly as, you know, you're really not going to risk a Holly going into, for example, going into um, dangerous space because your cargo will be worth, like, millions of yeah, credits. way more than the ship even um okay. so you like hollies will stay mostly within um organized shipping lanes that are protected it's, it's really interesting the ship that they just announced the hercules because that is one that will go into more dangerous areas right yep. but it can't carry as much as the holly it's all it's it's nowhere it's near awesome like, well, uh, one thing people don't really quite get is exactly how much the holly can carry like, it it dwarfs every other cargo ship like to a ridiculous extent. Okay, so Commander Llama, <laughs> uh, a bunch of people in chat are, are mentioning some stuff. I, I kind of want to ask you about it because, you know, yes. some sides are saying uh, there is no win in Star Citizen, so it can't be way, pay, you know, it can't be pay to win because there is no winning. And you did, you did address that in the article, but can I you, saw that one coming. Can yeah. you, uh, can you expand on that? Oh, I, I wrote this weeks ago. I don't remember what I said. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you feel now? <laughs> how do I feel now? Well, look. In in I I think I compare Star Citizen somewhat to a sandbox game. It it's not a pure sandbox game, but given how many ways there will be to play Star Citizen, uh, just the number of degrees of freedom in the game. Uh, even if it's Six. not like, yeah, <laughs> Minecraft, not Minecraft creative mode level of sandbox, like it's it's a sandbox game. Uh, more so when they add base building and all that stuff, like and the players can literally shape the verse. Um, and uh, there there's merit in you can't win a pure sandbox game. Uh, there's no winning in creative mode. 
Minecraft, as far as I know. Um, but in a game like Star Citizen that has a lot of progression, uh, a lot of different kinds of progression, uh, even though you can kind of pick your path in the same way you might pick a, a certain class in an RPG or a certain branching storyline or something vaguely relatable, there's, I mean, there, there, there is a way to kind of win or lose the game. Uh, and I think I also looked at it from a time slice perspective. Um, so if I log on to Star Citizen in three years, I'm being kind of optimistic there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I hop into my Aurora and, uh, I just, I start trying to leave my hangar and I just get blown up every time I try to leave the hangar. Like there's just a, there's a pirate org. They've, they've, they've taken down the UE patrol. They just, they control this space. Uh, and I just get ganked over and over and over again. And there's really nothing I can do because I, I'm in an, uh, uh, and even though I have LTI, which is super important as you guys always drive home, um, uh, you know, it's just the little pea shooters on that Aurora. They're just not getting me there. And then, uh, you know, after two hours, I'm pretty patient but I log off kind of frustrated. Did I win there? Was that a successful session? Did I progress forward? What do you think? Well, did you have fun? I think you were fucking stupid to keep doing it. Why didn't you just give up after the second attempt to go, I probably oh, should have just gone later. So, <laughs> no here's, here's a question though. Uh, did you have fun? Uh, I, can remember, um, I, can remember playing Call, I can remember playing Call of Duty 2. And I was on, and I played a hell of a lot of Call of Duty 2 and always got accused of being a hacker. It was great. Um, so good. It was so good. But I can remember playing Call of Duty 2 sitting in, in one of the maps. I don't even remember what bloody map it was. But it was a full server. And then an actual hacker came on, right? And he literally stood in the middle of the map. And if he had line of sight to anyone, he would pivot and shoot, headshot, done, dead. Weren't we playing this together? I think we were. This was a United Offensive, actually. Possibly. I just remember a couple of, like, like, and, and the server cleared. It emptied. And this guy, this hacker, had clearly paid to win, right? Like, he had paid some, or downloaded, whatever. A, he paid for this hack. Yeah. To win. Specifically to win. But me... I think it was down to like three people left in the server and we we coordinated and we changed the rules of the game to be we triangulated and we all stayed crouched and then in chat we coordinated to all stand up at the same time and all shoot he could only pivot to one at a time and the yeah. goal became team let's up kill him let's kill, kill him once, kill him once. And that was victory. And that is one of the most fun experiences that I had in that game. Well, yeah, so, but then but then all those people who left the game, they're yes, probably I, all pissed off. It's not a perfect metaphor. It's the it is what you make out of it. And I've been arguing I, that with with Star Citizen for a long time because people ask me why the hell did you spend five thousand dollars on on Star Citizen? You're fucking mad. Well, you know what? <laughs> I am, but it's also what I've made out of it because I, I don't even care about the game all that much. I love this, and I love the people, and I love watching it grow, and I'm really hopeful that it's going to be something awesome. But it's about what I've made out of it. By the way, I actually checked something. I thought this would be very. This is interesting. I don't think I actually have mentioned it yet on uh, like live or anything. I figured this out. If you played World of Warcraft from the beginning, <laughs> yeah, you. You've now spent over twenty five hundred dollars US on World of Warcraft. Yep, that's that. It's that's interesting, a lot of money. actually. Plus, plus, probably BlizzCon. Yeah. Oh, it's, probably BlizzCon. Yeah. If, if yeah. you're that, if you're that diehard. I I went. It's amazing. So I there want to. Uh, I want. So I'd to... like to actually. Okay, go ahead. On to, yeah. it was, that was a good. That was a good. Uh, wasn't really a rant, but it was a good monologue. Um, 
Thank you. And I'd say, um, his monologue. That's not a negative connotation. It's just he 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 had a lot of work <laughs> at once. Anyway, um, I I kind of agree. So I think the make your own fun thing can be applied to any game, and it's a bit of a slippery slope sometimes. So somewhat recently in, in the first article, I brought up Sea of Thieves, where you can actually, you can make your own fun, right? Yeah. You can just, like, I mean, I... Yeah, because the I, developers I, didn't. Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> nothing to do in the game. So actually, Sorry. one of the only things to do is uh, just, you know, just make your own fun. Like, you define... I feel, I feel is. like you wrote an article about that recently. Uh, I did. That... Um, so I think there's limits. My and my the pay to win quote accusation uh, will literally just not affect certain people. Like, and I that's okay. There's a subset of the player base that it just doesn't matter whether there's any pay to win or not because they're cool. They like, they don't care. They're gonna do their own thing in the in the verse. I'm hopefully one of those people. Um, but to ignore what could happen uh, if I think things weren't tuned right uh, and a lot of real money gets into the verse and there's a fair bit of competition, more than you think there is, and it's worth being wary. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just sign it off as, yeah, you can't win. So, you know, just make your own fun. I, no, I you think that right there is, yeah. Yeah. No, and I think it's important that the, the community remains vigilant and holds CIG to it, but you know, at the end of the day, if if they follow the path that they say they're following, um, you know, I know people have random gripes all the time with this concept sale or that concept sale, but they really haven't changed things fundamentally in a long time. Um, I think as long as the community remains vigilant and CIG doesn't like out tr outright try to screw people like, you know, certain EA companies. Um, <laughs> and I don't think um, they go that far at all. Like, I don't know. Um, one of the other big, uh, one of the other big advantages Star Citizen has is, um, and this is, this is in many, 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 many ways, but space, which is funny it's a space game but there actually is a lot more room in star citizen than in most games so it's a lot harder to be like this pirate lord who kills everybody because would you just fly just around you it's, 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 <laughs> like so, you can't do that <laughs> so kind of what you're saying is in to enjoy the price of the eternal freedom in the sandbox is eternal vigilance yes so a couple of things uh, I wanted to bring up. Okay. Um, first of all, to give it just to remind people because I was talking about it recent to actually give you a number. The hull E hull, uh, cargo capacity is ninety eight thousand SCU. The closest ship that isn't just another hull ship is, as far as I can tell, the Banu Merchantman at like sixty five hundred. Okay. <laughs> It's not even yeah. remotely close. Anyway, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was that we also, because we forgot to do it originally, we also posted um, the uh, Sea of Thieves article on uh, Spectrum, and it actually did quite well on Spectrum. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, uh, it got 45 replies and 17 upvotes, which I think is about the most Spectrum has ever seen. It wasn't click. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so... I do want to move us over to questions shortly. We only have five questions right now. If you don't ask <sighs> more questions, I will be singing a medley of songs from Shrek. Oh, wait. Don't ask any questions, please. No questions. I want to hear this. <laughs> uh, but before we get there, uh, Nakara... You did uh, some brief analysis, and it, and I'm hoping this comes out as an actual uh, analysis article oh, yeah. from you later of the Hercules sale. <laughs> now, you you hang on. This is this is actually something that I, I really want to tie into this this uh, discussion of pay to win. It's something I've wanted to tie in for since you you told me. But what are the numbers? 
it's a little concerning. It's not what I thought it would be. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say concerning. It just wasn't what I expected. Uh, I'm actually going to check the actual numbers right now, but um, can it's someone been a and, couple days. and can someone but, be prepared uh, to do some math for me because I can't do math, but I'm going to need uh, the math for this. Okay, so <laughs> the my concern is when the Star Hercules Starlifter was concierge only. So the only people who could buy this are people who'd spent over a thousand dollars US already. Um, it made. 1.2 million dollars in a in a week. How much does it cost um, on average? It's between what five and seven hundred US. I don't know. I don't know what the. Oh, well, it goes from three hundred. Well, it depends on whether you're warbond or not. But anyway, it goes from anywhere from three hundred to seven hundred. But seven hundred is is including um, a store credit. So, right. Uh, so three hundred to six hundred, really. So like, let's say five um, four fifty or five hundred on average. And how yeah. many? How many million before? How many sold? One uh, point two million. So, um, I guess that's like a thirty three or three thousand. Like so. Okay. And how many um, after concierge? So, currently we are. Uh, it's still for sale, right? It's for sale probably till Monday. I'm guessing. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That that sounds right. But anyway, it's still for sale. But it's currently at. Um, 670 grand with everybody else. So in total, we're looking at what, like 4,000 sold? It's up, to two. it's up to 2 million, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Which is actually really good for one of Star Citizen's ships. Yeah, sales, it's just but... under it's just just under 2 million, yeah. It's actually doing really well for a Star Citizenship. Uh, CCUs only factor in if it. it brings new money this is only counting new money it's not counting um no like it's just this is fun it doesn't anything. count it's new funds doesn't count. yeah um but, so i just wanted to say just wanted to say actually comparing the exact same time periods because the uh, looks like the sale for the for everybody else will go a little longer yeah the exact same time periods it was um it, ironically enough it was literally 1.2 million against 600,000. So it's yeah. half as much from the entire rest of the group. Um, but my concern there is it's, I mean, I it's probably the clearest sign we've ever had that it is the longtime big money backers for Star Citizen that are continuing to provide at least, what, that 67% of the support <laughs> for, the, for the game financially. The other question I have, and this is more for Admiral Alpaca, and I'd like Shiver to weigh in on it too, because Shiver stays quiet for way too long. Um, so quiet. If, how, uh, actually, Nakara, how many, how many citizens do we have? Um, I can million? actually tell you the up-to-date number in just a moment. Um... So, um, now keep in mind, this is people with accounts. It's not the actual people who backed. But, right. Um, so, we have just over 2 million accounts. So, 2 million and 36,000. So, we've got 2 million people that... Let's just... let's. We have to assume because well, we don't have okay. numbers of how many so, people no, actually have we, ships. We got some reasonable idea before. It looks like about half of the accounts have, are backers. So, okay. it's about a million about okay. a million backers. So let's say a million backers and four thousand of them have bought this pay to like pay to advance ship. Uh, what percentage is that? And that is zero point four percent. So if point four percent have chosen the easy way to get this ship and most other ships probably based on the funding numbers and based on this sh this sale actually doing better than most of the other sales, are we still talking pay to win? Well, yeah. I mean, it's still some segment of the population has has it. Is point four percent of the population anything even remotely significant? In one ship example, no. Um, and I mean, is the Starlifter one of the? This is where a lot of the knobs can be tuned. So, like, is a Starlifter even a ship where okay, one person has it, but are they, like, there's no, there is no magic spaceship of death, right? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, the, the A2 is a very powerful ship, but I'm sure it's not impervious. Right. Like, the whole top... One of the, uh, one of the things I love about Star Citizen, to very, very brief aside, <laughs> very brief aside, a lot of the ships have obvious weaknesses. 
Sorry, I um, like Sunjammer. They've totally won mining with buying the Hercules. Yeah, that's sort of, that was sort of my point before. If you want to be a miner, the Hercules does nothing for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, um, anyway, what I was just going to say is that, you know, like the, the even the A2, one of the things that you notice about it is all of its weapons basically point down. Like it's yeah. definitely an air to ground, like attack ship and a bomber. If you attack it from the top, there are very few of the turrets can even hit you. So... I, I, one of the things I like is they do a lot of that. Um, the javelin, for example, has has a weak point on its back. Um, it's it doesn't really have a lot of rear facing weapons. You know things like that. I, I I really like about how they've designed the ships so that they all have some weakness, even if they're terrifying. <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't e I didn't even write the article with the mind that CIG is doing a bad job. I just mm -hmm. wanted to deep dive uh, the discussion. That was that uh, was I what I actually... loved about the article because so many of these discussions are so polarizing and you were just like, let's take a completely neutral position and explain the actual situation. And that was what I think a lot of people liked about it. it I, I think, think that's really important. And I, I hope you continue doing it because it's something that uh, – uh, one of the things I noticed on the Reddit thread, and I wanted to mention this earlier and forgot about it, but uh, I saw – like and. Uh, I mean, I, I did give up. There were like 850 comments on the subreddit. I, I kind of stopped. Of I st kind of stopped reading them after about 400. But um, I saw a lot of people who are, for lack of a better term, goons or trolls or like, not, not, not necessarily trolls, but like people who prefer their concerns all the time or even people that have refunded and, and, mm -hmm. and, I saw continued them continued hanging around <laughs> and continued hanging I saw around some because refunders as I yeah, them. but who were like, okay, I this this article is good, it has a point, and then people who've spent thousands of dollars on Star Citizen are like, okay, this article is good, it has a point. It was it was just it, like it wasn't coming at it with a Star Citizen's the best or Star Citizen's. The worst. It was just let's look at facts, mm -hmm. analyze. And uh, go, well Commander Lemma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's just there's so much polarization, and there's definitely some camps in Star Citizen. Uh, I like to. Yeah. If it if anything felt good, I, I felt I feel like I hit kind of a middle position, uh, and I'd be happy to do it again. Though I don't have any new article ideas right now. So, Suggest uh, us some. Hey. Hey. Yeah. We, we like new article ideas. Okay, uh, before we get to questions, one quick thing. Um, I do want, from each of you, and then from everyone in chat, either, yes, Star Citizen is pay to win. No, Star Citizen is not pay to win. Maybe it's somewhere in a gray area in between, or it doesn't matter. Uh, Shiver? Melissa Estrada. Fuck you. Shiver? Oh fuck! I, right in, in its current state, or what it'll be like on, or what we hope it'll be. What we, like what we're release. hoping for, based on what we know, on launch. I would say it's not pay to win. It would be pay for advantage or pay for lack of time. So you're maybe. somewhere in the maybe. Okay, Nakara. Maybe I agree with the article. And Commander Lama, I, having written uh, it. Yeah, I mean. I mean, the problem with those forced choice questions, I think three options apply. Uh, <laughs> so it's like a maybe, and it is a gray area, and we don't know where it is in the gray area, uh, but it's not no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. But what... it might not matter. It like, might not matter. Yeah. That's the that's the that's the thing that we're all kind of waiting to find out. It's or, like at the end, at the end it might this, not. Yeah, and I think actually thing. like Chris Roberts. Uh, Chris Roberts said this. Sorry, I read so much pay to win stuff uh, in researching the article. Uh, but his value for the design is, I would say, solid. It's just like the largest amount of fun for the largest amount of players. And I think, yes, it is a little pay to win, but CIG stays on course. I think it's probably just going to be a thin subset of players that maybe get burned a little by uh i don't know it might be by by high level play 
I'll say. Yeah, well, I mean, if there's some guy who doesn't have any money and he's starting with right, and his goal is to be the biggest shipping lord in all of he's so you, all of the verse, he's probably going to start off at a disadvantage. It really probably. depends what you want to do in the game. You could still make and it. And actually, though. what I didn't touch on in in great totally. depth in the article was probably organization and just like what possible like mega structures might exist. Yeah. Uh, due to orgs, due to just some of the gigantic ships that will only ever be owned by orgs, other than when they're kamikaze vessels <laughs> like, that had large wallets. Article version two coming 2019 um let's get to some questions before we end because we spent a lot of time on that which uh was what this entire show was to be about so i'm pleased uh captain penis asks oh, do you see cargo ever behaving realistically example will a ship transporting fuel be more likely to explode than one transporting pillows will i be able yes. to bring down an idris with an avenger loaded with fuel and fertilizer Yes. 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 I love how he thinks. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think good, if you I could... wanna, It's the Battlefield Jihad, like the, from the game Battlefield. I'm not, not saying anything. They used to, used to throw loads of C4 on your um, yeah. um, Jeep and then so it's good. last second. That was, the, that was the best. That's actually how I played Battlefield. Oh, yeah. That, 100%. That it. Just I think that. if you can find a way to fly your Avenger full of full to the brim <laughs> with explosives with like dynamite strapped around your helmet, um, LTI into the <laughs> actual into the actual like hangar bay of the Idris is gonna blow. I, I find this up. I find this funny because you say <laughs> that it's more likely to explode than one transporting pillows. The one transporting pillows is just as likely to explode. It's just the feathers aren't nearly going to do as much damage as, you know, the explosion. Uh, They're highly Shiver, can you take like, the next question? I will be right back. Oh, okay. I was going to say, um, I think even, even Freelancer had, like, types of cargo. So it, it seems almost like there's almost a 0% chance that, like, there wouldn't be, you know, even more detailed cargo. In Especially because, that. like, they've already talked about this. They will the actually map, be they'll actually be modeling the cargo that's in the crates, and it'll actually have its own physical properties and all that. Crap, I guess the so. root of the question is, um, does, like, would a, would a cargo hold made of just fuel tankers uh, meaningfully contribute, like, damage to a nearby ship? Maybe that's the. That's why I said. That's why I said fly into the uh, into the hangar bay because then it probably definitely would. Yeah, I shouldn't have even said probably. Then it definitely would. Um. All right. Next. What's the next question there, Shiver? Uh, you have the Clayton's and what's it? Ha asks. What are everyone's thoughts on the Squadron Forty Two roadmap being AWOL since holiday live stream and CIG ignoring the upvoted calling all devs questions? Uh, they already have addressed both of those things. I assume that they're not being assholes. Um, they've already said that they will be putting up the Squadron 42 roadmap when it's ready to be shown, when they're at a point where they can actually show it. Um, I am annoyed that it's delayed because a couple times they've been like, it's coming soon, and then it just hasn't. Um, but um, the other part of that um so ignoring the calling all the upvoted calling all devs questions they've already he addresses it almost every episode they if they can't find an answer they don't have a good answer to a question or if it's a question that simply doesn't you know if there is no answer right now then they won't address it directly they used to do the same thing with um with uh tin for the chairman when people are like when star citizen going to be released and it's like well, it's 2013, <laughs> and they not did, right now. <laughs> they did it with Ten for the Chairman. They did it with Reverse the Verse. He, they'd yeah. filter the questions. If you're asking, ask a stupid question, you don't get your answer. And it's not necessarily a stupid question. It's just like, like how how many um, how many hull plates will the Banu Merchantman have on its aft like quarter? And you're like, or aft um, port quarter, and it's like, well, we don't know yet. So. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and probably like they probably they, they definitely have an internal roadmap, but I mean it could be in like a sorry or a complete state, and you really want to see it. I right think they want to get within a certain 
a certain um, expectation of their distance to release before they put the roadmap up. Um, I personally think this is just in my head, but I personally think that the roadmap will be up a year prior to release. Like it will, it will, it will roadmap out the year prior to release. But that's just my expectation. My since my Alpha Three Crystal <laughs> Ball was actually pretty accurate. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Squadron 42 release date at CitizenCon. I'm yeah, thinking that's probably that's right. Pretty, that is, that's pretty probable. We're now within six months of CitizenCon. That might actually be when we get the roadmap. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd see the I mean, roadmap coming out when they know oh, when it's when coming it out. Release date, but yeah. Okay, uh, Stuart yeah, GT it. asks. Would INN have let you publish the Is Star Citizen Pay to Win article? Uh, yes, uh, yes, because I ran INN. The uh, unfortunate thing was I didn't have control of INN, and uh, that's why INN died. And when when we when we mean when we talk about control, we specifically mean we did not have control of the website itself, yeah. like the actual like backend, like server side stuff. Like um, we had editorial control of everything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, your beer cup asks, what are you drinking out of me today? Today, I have two beer, uh, both from a brewery in Hamilton, or Kingston, Ontario, called Spearhead. A, the first one I was drinking was Sam Roberts' band's Spear, uh, it's just an ale, uh, with the approval of Sam Roberts' band. And the second one is a Hawaiian-style pale ale. Uh, really nice, not very hoppy, but really fruity and just pleasant. Uh, it's it's excellent. Um, next question here. Uh, what are your personal definitions of pay to win? I think we might have covered that. I'll hop in first. Um, just read the article. I, like, I think I actually have it in a box. Yes. So. Uh, I, I hate to say it, but I agree almost entirely with Commander Lama's uh, assessment of pay to win in the article. Uh, it's, yeah, that's... I think it is generally used as a slur, pretty much. Like, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's used to discredit uh, most of the time. It's so, so the, it's kind of used in its literal sense, which is a problem with the term itself. Yeah. Uh, but my, what I think it is, it's in the article. Um, one thing I'm quite proud about is that, at least in terms of PC games, one of the reasons I don't mo I don't mobile game at all is because it's such a freaking wasteland of garbage. But there's um, a couple good ones. There are some there very are a couple. Good ones. Good, I just I just gave up on it because there's so many bad games. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there are definitely a couple good ones. I used to play. There's like a one um, company I think called Kyrosoft. They had yes. a lot of cool games that I liked. They had a lot, a lot of, of cool games. ones, but then they started making it uh, like in in app purchases and yep. And, they were all uh, they were all like just single pay to begin with or like free, and they were awesome. Anyway, and they um, made but I just wanted to anyway. Yeah, I I, I just I, I'm very proud of Kingdom like Rush. the P, the PC gaming community has very much basically stood up and sit, given a giant middle finger to games that really violate Battlefront. Um, the, Pay to win thing. Battlefront like, and the, Mo Shadow of Mo uh, War did terribly, yep. largely because people were like, "No, screw this! I'm not, I'm not." Even even in a si you're adding loot boxes and pay to buy loot to boxes a single player in a bloody game? single player game. No, you can burn off in hell and die. Mm -hmm. Bur just just and, go uh, die. We don't I like actually, you. We don't like your game codes. <laughs> now you have to buy them. <laughs> So I, I just wanted to mention, I did hear afterwards that um, uh, after it was released, um, Battlefront 2's sales went down 67% from it, from its uh, first game. So I was very proud of people for that. Yeah. Um, there's a couple more coming out that it looks like we're going to have to nuke. Um, looks like the there's a what COD Black Ops COD 4 Blops or something. COD Ops 4, yeah. Um, looks horrific. Guys, and, um, vote with your wallets. Money matters. If they don't get lots money, of games. if they don't get money for doing this, they, they won't, won't do, do it. it. And and this is something that goes for Star Citizen as well. If if CIG weren't making money by putting in war bonds, they wouldn't be putting in war bonds. 
If you mm-hmm. really want change, if you really truly want change, the only way to affect change is by voting with your wallet or voting, period. God damn it, America. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to also mention that um, uh, ba, 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 ba. one that actually really rankles me because I've heard so many people that are so excited for this game, Anthem is coming oh, yeah. up. And it is literally, they, they've talked about this in public, that they are literally designing that game around trying to extract the most, most money, money they possibly can from the gamers. And it like literally alters the game experience to try and get you to buy more things constantly like as a dynamic thing I think, like so uh, yeah if you are too powerful it'll suddenly make the enemies stronger so you feel weak so you have to spend money to get better stuff so that you can be powerful again and it's like fuck you i'm sorry <laughs> like that I think I, I that I... game pisses me off and it's not even close to release i think it was about six or seven months ago um eris was mentioning like having anthem on his wish list and i like I got mad at him. It's like, and I'm actually angry. And be like, I'm angry that Bioware oh. is making that game. Yeah, well, they're Bioware's dead. I mean, yeah, they the talent. E- they've okay, been some E-E-I'd. of the talent's still there, but eh, no, yeah. the it golden makes... days of Bioware are gone. Larian Studios. Hey, I was I was honestly really excited for uh, Shadow of War because I really liked Shadow of Mordor. I thought it was a a well done game. Yeah. And then they did the loot box thing, and I was like, okay, no, I'm not buying it. And then they removed the loot box thing, and I still haven't bought it because I don't give a shit. The interest, and like, and if that if that's what Anthem does, when it lo- I won't buy it. Mm-hmm. No, I'm normally kind of uh, actually pretty much left Reddit because I got so tired of the gamer outrage. Like yeah. every week is just a new thing, but actually, like yeah, like like a like a broken clock. Um, the loot box the right thing. The twice a day. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Outrage away. Like, make a huge mm-hmm. stink. Take it. Don't just vote with your wallet. Take it to social media. Like, drop their share prices. Like, fuck these practices. Yeah. Yep. Like, I. And honestly, for me, you know, it just oh, it just blows my mind. First of all, I think what the end game of this is is that publishers just need to die because they don't serve a purpose anymore at yeah. all. Um, uh, they used it and... used to be the only way you used no no hang on you used to have to get hard boxes in stores and that used to be the only way to get your game and you could which is do completely that. gone that's and it's it's <laughs> it still exists for consoles somewhat but even consoles now are getting rid of that and for PC it's dead uh, Commander Lama and I worked in a video game store for years. Right, like it's still, it's very strong on console. It's um, strong on digital, console, but but PC digital is gaining PC, traction. Though? It's kind of a every year gain some traction. It is slow compared to PC. I remember like watching our PC wall, the wall of PC games yep. shrinking to two lines of PC games, <laughs> shrinking to like three boxes because that's all they're all they're all, are just and they're all blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's just codes. There's nothing. There's nothing there. Uh oh. Hi there. Someone's shirt is green. Do you see that your shirt's green? It doesn't show up on the... Is that cool? Yeah. Why did you do that? <laughs> hey, you're invisible. Because it's the same color as this behind. And it's a green screen, so you see through it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, That's right? awesome. Right through the wall? Yes. Yes, there's a giant, there's a, there's a rover right behind the wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You got shin pads and cleats? Yep. Nice. Safe. Oh, good. Those will keep you safe. And this is our adorable hour. Yes, yeah, sorry. We've, we've, we're having a quick break here. I apologize. If we have any cats or dogs. Uh, Unfortunately, I have no pets or children order. around. <laughs> awesome. High five. You like the cleats? What size did you get? There's three. Threes? Good. You'll grow into those. High five. But I like that your uh, I like that your um, yeah. llamas hey, there are uh, are a little fuzzy on the stream there. Yeah, I think the uh, <laughs> yeah I don't know what's going on there. The, the green screen, the lighting in the 
Okay. The wall behind me is pretty bad. So. Um, but uh, uh, hang on. Just... Asriel says that it, Bioware has stated that acquisition of the game, making stronger AI to encourage you to spend more money, isn't going to be in the game. We'll see. Uh, Anthem is still way too far out for us to know. It's um, why it's still on my looking forward to list. Uh, can I just mention something? Yeah, go ahead. Bioware is controlled by EA. EA said they're going to do it. They'll do it. Period. Yeah. Uh, okay, I wanna I wanna answer a few more <laughs> of these questions. My, that's my opinion. Uh, Space Mad Explorer asks, I kind of want to know what Star Citizen needs to have to be considered somewhat finished. Shiver. Oh Jesus Christ, that's a long list. <laughs> keep, keep, it to, keep it to two sentences. Do it really fast. Fully fleshed out multi-crew mechanics, fully fleshed out salvage, fully fleshed out mining, fully fleshed out economy, fully fleshed out NPCs, and, you know, lots of different systems. Basically, what they said, they're going to start with that fucking launch. No? Any Anyone else have anything else? Yeah, I'm, I, was, I was waiting for you to ask me. Um, so... To okay, so give it keeping in mind this game is going to be const constantly evolving. Uh, what they need to launch are all of the all of the professions need to be that we currently know about need to be done. Um, to like as close to a finished state as they can be. Um, all of uh, all of, I think they said that all the ships like before twenty eighteen was it would be done. Um. They need to have all of the all of the core game mechanics need to be in the economy needs to be in um, all of the core features of the game have to be done and then they need five systems in my opinion to start and they and they also need a very solid plan to add at least one system per per patch to the game. Uh, Commander Lama, what do you opinion. think? Uh, I don't think I have anything substantive to add. I pretty much all that. Uh... The, the kind of ruler in my head since the Kickstarter has been um, once they eclipse, n this isn't in terms of scale, like game scale, but once they eclipse Freelancer in like gameplay uh, and there's just a, there's multiple game loops, you can do different stuff, you can go to different places. You can call that like kind of the start of done. If we're talking the MMO side of it, uh, it should never be done. Uh, it should be supported yeah. until it, I guess, fizzles out in 15 years or if it's... Chris way. Roberts has already said, and I, I mean, you never know what, what happens in the future, but he's already said that he basically doesn't expect to make anything else for the rest of his career. This, this will is just it. be... This is he. Next 20 years is Star Citizen. <laughs> yep. Pretty in much. some form or another, because they're Sounds continuing good. to make the squadrons, and then after Squadron is done, they're going to continue making more single-player games as well. So, Yeah. Tons. Uh, to go. So Napoleon Bonafarts asks, isn't it a bit weird that there are 2 million accounts, but Twitch viewership is constantly under a thousand viewers at a given time? Not at all. Uh, it's a an extremely early alpha game. Uh, what's there to do on Twitch? I mean, you spend six hours in the PU and you've seen everything that there is currently in the PU, quite frankly. I gotta be honest, I've, I've tuned into even some of the relay streams of the... Uh, it wasn't... I don't think it was uh, 3.1. It was 3.0. Uh, and it was pretty boring overall. Uh, like, there's not, there's not a lot of game there yet. This seems like the year of play. Uh, yes. Yeah, there's the a lot coming. really comes online. Uh, but right now... Eh. I think adding to that, um, this is a this is a really long process of game development, and with this kind of open development, no one, not even the mentally prepared, can fully like understand how just long this process I, is. I think as some, gamers, one thing we were so talking most about. Most people are just tuned out. Of one the project, thing we were talking about earlier today is uh, E3 is coming up, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people are speculating for E3 is Bethesda might have uh, a next Elder Scrolls or something to show off, like they did with Fallout 4, and they showed, like they announced it like four months before it launched. 
But something interesting to note about that is that Fallout 4 spent seven years in development for a single player only game. Eight, eight years in development for a single player only game. And it wasn't even all that great a game. Let's be completely bloody honest here. It was, um, a, it was a good game. It wasn't a good Fallout. That's what yeah. I've always said. So, so like, <clears throat> CIG are getting to around five years. They're still three years away from even Bethesda launching a Fallout. Like, like, guys. The problem, with the, down. the problem with our perceptions is that we knew about the game from the beginning, yep. whereas with Fallout 3, we literally didn't, or Fallout, Fallout 4, 4, we didn't know about we didn't know about the game until literally three Just months before it released. Yeah. And that was three fantastic. Months. And I, I love it that they did that. And I hope that they do it again. It's outstanding to not have... I have been waiting for Mountain Blade Bannerlord for so long. So long, guys. I really want Bannerlord. Do you understand? Mountain Blade is one of the best goddamn games of all freaking time and there's no banner lord and there's no release date and it's been been for so long yeah the vampire is coming out next month who cares i wonder if that'll be um good. so I, I just wanted to address something here um togar says isn't bethesda doing a sci-fi rpg right now um i had not heard about it but i just wanted to mention and it, okay. no. it just um wanted to mention that it's, uh, uh, in case this is what you meant, Bethesda is enormous, so they can make more than one game at a time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so I want to get through the last of these questions, and then we got a slight announcement to make. So the original Grib asks, if you buy a prospector for mining and it helps you mine better than someone that doesn't have one, isn't that pay to win? Commander Llama? Um... That depends. Is the prospector like the very first intro mining ship? And I know as there's far no as we know, one. yes. That's like the huge one that really one person's probably not going to mine with. As far as we know, you can mine by hand or mine in a prospector. It's from hand to prospector. Okay, so the the basement level is mining by hand. Yes, with like a little mining yeah. laser with like yeah. a handheld thing. Yeah. Okay, Spoon. and you could, you could do that on any... You could have a 100i cargo, and you could just yeah. go shoot some rocks. Um, is it pay to win? Well, it's definitely... If, you're, if your goal was to be a miner, then I guess it, it's definitely definitely a big head start. Well, yeah, I don't know how expensive... Is it pay to win, is. or is pay it to pay win? to advance? I think where pay to win would come in is can your ability to mine get blocked by the fact that there's just already a shit ton of people hogging all the good shit with iron specters. I don't fair. know. Can you uh, can you mine without buying a prospector? Yes. So I, I it's not it's not an egregious example, I don't think. Um, and I as far as mining goes, I don't I hope I, the procedural planets are huge, so I think there's going to be a lot of rocks to shoot. Uh, asteroid fields, I, I don't really know. There's going to be a lot of places to mine, guys. Like, Yeah, it's a big verse. So. Yeah. Oh, uh, apparently uh, what Bethesda is uh, announcing at E3 is Starfield, the new RPG. That'd be yeah, cool. Sci-fi RPG. I, um, I'd be looking forward to seeing that. Um, that's a new IP? Rudy. Yeah, it's a new IP. Rudy cool. asks, uh, if I pay Shiver for sex, is that pay to win? I'd never yes. charge you, babe. Hey, free to win. <laughs> and uh, someone else asks a question. Who's someone else? Did, did they? <laughs> Is it a rough Who one? Who put the shang in the shang the shang the shang? Who put the bop in the bop de bop de bop? Let's just, let's just say I don't approve of uh, people that assault people getting anything, period. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to transition to something here. We're just about done. Thank you, everyone, for the questions. By the way, that was our last question. Unfortunately, Aww, you don't... It's over already. Unfortunately, you don't get to hear me <laughs> sing medley from, from Shrek. Damn because, it! Because uh, 
I'm gonna be you putting... guys, why'd you have to ask a there's, freaking question? There's a thing on the, the, the screen now. It is an advertising flyer for uh, something that Relay is going to be trying to do uh, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, talk to Rudy in chat. He's there. Uh, bug him about it. But basically the idea is uh, we're looking for more stuff to do with uh, with Relay and, and Relay in association with PG-13 in association with, uh, with Rudy. Uh, we want to know more about the orgs. Um, as Star Citizen orcs. is fine. Orcs. Yeah, we want to know more about the orcs. <laughs> In the Vandal? Yeah. No, no, no. Orcs. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, the we're, Vandal. We're, we're looking for more information about orcs and, and how they evolved and where they come from. No. Uh, we're looking for more information. Like, we want to know about orcs. Uh, orcs are something that's going to be hugely important to Star Citizen. Um... And and Relay has, I mean, Relay itself is kind of an org. We just don't keep up with it. But orgs are going to matter. Orgs are basically clans. They're the same kind of idea. We want to know what kind of orgs people have. Um, we're we're already Rudy. I it, it would be better if Rudy was on here to explain this, but he's not. But Rudy's already in touch with a bunch of different orgs. Uh, Angels of the Rat, Black Star Initiative, Omega Core, Interstellar Exploration and Heavy Industries, PG-13, a bunch of others, to, to kind of talk orgs. Uh, we want to start spotlighting the kind of orgs that exist in the game, the kind of people that want to be, be doing things in the game. And different orgs have different goals. Um, and that's one of the things that's so interesting. There's, there's plenty of orgs out there that are like, we're going to focus specifically on um, on transferring cargo, or we're going to focus specifically on, you know, protection or security or assassination or or whatnot or news. Hell, uh, if you've got an org and you you want to talk about what it is you and your org want to be doing in game, what your hopes for the game are, keep in mind. Uh, one of the most important things about Star Citizen is way, way back, uh, Project Pitchfork was announced. And Project Pitchfork is not exactly hey, an hey, org. Hey, Operation Pitchfork. Sorry. Gotta Operation. Wait, right. Sorry. Sorry. Wait, wait, I'm, wait. I'm trying to do my Fork. rant. And you... Orc. It is Orc. Yeah, it's Project Pitch for Orc. <laughs> Operation Pitchfork. Operation Pitchfork. Pitch Pitch um, so <laughs> Operation Pitchfork was announced. And Operation pitchfork has literally changed some of the ways that the game was planning on being made and and that's something that orgs can do so we want to hear from orgs we want to hear what the org plans on doing how they're you know dealing with that practicing or just just what they want to be in the game eventually to assist what? and and help their goal grow because there's going to be so much in star citizen what if I come from a small organization, sir? I've only 10 people. Would you want to hear from my org or not? Definitely. I I mean, Without I can't speak people. for I can't speak for Rudy. You have to go through Rudy on this. Rudy's the one that's going to be actually doing this shit cuz uh Rudy's crazy. Um but I in my personal opinion, yeah, we'd want to hear about that cuz there will be smaller orgs that matter just as much as the larger ones. I mean, test is going to be hugely important, but there could be a small org that makes all the difference like someone like Relay. I mean, Relay's I think active after, active orgs right now have a decent chance of being super important because most of the backer base and thus most of the orgs are actually probably asleep. Like they're yeah. not really but if there's already communities forming now, they're going to act as seeds that are going to grow. Yep. yep. So and sometimes uh, they'll explode. We're we're know. still working on when these uh, these segments are going to start, but uh, they will probably be on here. This uh, Rudy is going to talk with org members, and uh, if you if you're interested, if you want to get in touch and, and spotlight your org, uh, there's contact on there. Get in touch with uh, with Rudy on spectrum or relay spotlight at gmail.com which is rudy um because he's going to be running this and spotlighting the orgs and uh we look forward to hearing from you all because orgs are hugely important orgs are hugely ugly they're big green things with evil ears and really we need to kill them all um and i personally Orc matter i cool personally ships, will though. not rest until every org is dead orc. wait what what <laughs>
Uh, that is and, that and, is and test squadron squad crashes the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that is it for our show for the day. Uh, but before we go, Nakara, do you have any last words on the subject of pay to win? Well, <laughs> last words, eh? Um, <laughs> kill all the orcs. I'm not an orc. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, any last words on the subject of pay to win? Um, uh, I'm happy with where Star Citizen is at right now, but we need to stay vigilant to make sure it doesn't get stupid like so like other games seem to be that's it that's it for me shiver what on pay to win yeah pay and to on win. Not pay to win once not okay commander llama uh you've got the second to last word i think i've said enough about pay to win uh that's your last words <laughs> But, uh, I, you know, I don't have any other article ideas, so, uh, you know, if you have any I, anything that wants to get get another deep dive by Relay. Uh, Why all ships should have a loo. Uh, yeah, that could be, that could be one. I, I do have to give a shit about it. That is the barrier to entry. <laughs> uh, if you, if, if you had no like toilet, to get... you couldn't give a shit. If you have a if you have a subject a topic that you'd like uh, Commander Lama to to delve into as as in depth as he did with uh, Pay to Win one he has to give a damn about it but two uh, join our Discord and uh, at him on our Discord and uh, who knows maybe maybe you can grab his attention and and he'll care about your question and eighteen hundred questions later. <laughs> none of them none of them matter and uh relay's done uh that said i get the last goddamn word because this is my bloody podcast and uh no one else can say anything else um thank you all so much for hanging out this was great commander llama uh i really hope you do find another article because they are something special in in a in a world of you know, quick shitty views on YouTube and quick let's let's do some bloody stupid hour and a half long podcast and just yell. You have articles that actually delve into issues and ask questions and and don't assume for anyone. You are simply doing the best to to answer the question that's there in front of you. And I I cannot express enough how appreciative I am of it. Um, they're fantastic. I hope you write another. Uh, Nakara, you're just a great all-around person. Thank you for everything. Um, thank you to everyone who worked on the transcript uh, this week. Nakara is still working on, on getting it up, but it will be up shortly. Shiver, uh, thanks for reminding me every week that uh, we have this show to do. Because uh, I frequently forget... Uh, because the relay replay. Yeah, that too. Uh, if you've never heard of the relay replay, you should check it out. It goes up every week over on relay.sc. It's a quick uh, five to ten minute uh, roundup of the news for the week, which we talk about on this show anyway. But if you don't want to watch this show for some reason because you're crazy or have better things to do with your time, like clipping your nails, painting your toes, uh, you know, staring at some paint that's drying literally anything uh check that out because it's a it's a very succinct uh view of star citizen every week thank you to everyone that listens thank you to everyone that uh f does the patreon stuff check out the pod sat uh the astro pub's going live in two hours from now i'm not sure if grayhead gamer is going live tonight but grayheaded gamer is trying for a disc uh twitch partnership so uh find him on twitter give him some support if you can because gray-headed gamer is fantastic uh one of the best streamers of star citizen uh seriously throw throw him some support astropub is live right now we've been cutting into him this entire time because we're jackasses but the pub will be live in uh in i believe two hours that's always awesome check it out Thank you all for hanging out. Thank you all for watching us and uh, uh, vote for gun control because fucking stop killing kids, please. <laughs>